it easier than ever. Right now, you can get one dozen assorted roses with a free glass vase for $19.99 plus shipping and handling. Go to proflowers.com and use the code CHEAPHEAT. Help support the show by supporting our sponsors. Use the code CHEAPHEAT. When you send flowers, trust Pro Flowers to get it right. Oh yeah, this is Brian Campbell of the 5 Rounds MMA Podcast on ESPN.com. Join me and Brett Okamoto this week as we talk to UFC heavyweight Travis Brown on his February 19th return and life in the public eye with Ronda Rousey. Plus, an interview with Matt Brown. Don't miss it. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to a special edition of the 73rd ranked Sports and Recreation Podcast on planet Earth, emanating today from downtown San Antonio, Texas, the, the spot where we all just went down at the Alamo Dome of the Royal Rumble 2017, Royal Rumble 30, if you will. My name is Peter Rosenberg. I am joined by the Brian Campbell, and in spirit, joined by stat guy Greg. I'm going to start off, we're going to get right into it. First of all, good evening, the Brian Campbell, and give us your immediate takeaways from the Royal Rumble. It's a complicated immediate takeaway, right? Because there weren't a lot of surprises in this Rumble, so it's, it's understandable that you're going to get a lot of flack on social media, because for those eight spots we didn't know about coming in, those weren't used on the big ticket surprises. The Shinsuke's, the Samoa Joe's, the HBK's, the Kenny Omega, if you will. They didn't go deep on there. I thought there was a point midway through the Rumble where it felt like a disappointment. But I'll give them this. That close was incredibly strong. That stretch from numbers 26 through 30, when you went Lesnar, Undertaker, Goldberg, and a surprise Roman Reigns at 30, mixing that with the Wyatt family, that close really did a lot to solidify this Rumble. Now, you see people on social media, though, saying this is a very forgettable Rumble. I won't go that far. I just think we didn't get the payoff of the finish to lead this to be an all-time great memorable Rumble. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to go out here and say straight up off the top, I'm going to be honest about the fact that, you know, let's be clear, both of us are sort of colored by our experience. You know, mine, of course, working the show. You were doing interviews backstage all day as well, so you were geeking out yourself, right, in terms of how how much you overall enjoyed the day. So we, we will factor that in and be honest about it. But that said, I was surprised to see some of the reactions, and I'll tell you why. Uh, number one, because we got another classic from AJ Styles and John Cena. Just an unbelievable match. Um, I also love, and we'll get into it more of that match, but I love Cena's reaction to the win. You could tell that this one meant more to him than the others. And now listen, am I disappointed that we didn't get one old school pop on the Rumble? I was disappointed. Yeah, I mean, you want, I mean, you want something, even if it's something, on Repu- you'd be, you'd be, to your disappointed you didn't even get a Repug pop. You didn't even get an Axel Jim Duggan pop. Like, you didn't get any of that. But, Peter, does that speak to something that we talked about coming in here, the depth of the roster? Well, I, I, I said coming in here, you don't need Kurt Angle at this Rumble. You don't need Kenny Omega. You don't even really need HBK. With what you have and with the potential of those two NXT guys we talked about, I thought they didn't need to, to do the bells and whistles. Now, in the end, they didn't really do many bells and whistles at all. They stuck with the strength of the roster. Now, you can argue whether that that left it disappointing, but I think what this brand split has showed you the second half of 2016 is that it's helped make a lot of stars, and I think you kind of saw that. Like, you had your old guys with Taker and Goldberg in there, but you kind of saw there's a lot, of, there's a crop right now that stepped up and did some big things. That Wyatt family drama, that was all good stuff. The problem, though, for people, I think, is Randy winning. Because, yes, it was somebody you didn't see coming all the last two days. Twitter was blowing up for Randy because of how the betting odds may have changed in England or something connected to that. I wasn't really sure. But when I look at it, it's like, I mean, I did talk to Randy afterwards, and it was really great to hear, you know, I interviewed him to really get to feel how much this meant to him. You know, he had won it in 2009. So from that point of view, from that storyline of the real life, I thought it was good. But storyline-wise, the biggest question everybody has with this, Peter, is where do you go from here? Where do you go from here into Mania? Because had it been, let's say, The Miz winning, and let's say he's going to face Cena on a program, you already can book that in your head. Problem is, right now, we don't know really how to book Randy Orton winning this Rumble as of right now, an hour after the match ended. And that's exactly, to me, what is irritating about fans, is that you would think fans would like that there's still a bit of mystery, because here's what I don't think is going to happen. I think a lot of the repug reaction is people feeling 
Oh no! Are they just gonna say? Are they just gonna say oh, Cena one more? Cena uh, Orton one more time, guys? It never has this been done with the Cheap Beat Podcast before. Could we get a pepperoni pizza and an order of wings? That would be tremendous. Thank you so much. You like that was live, local, and late breaking as it happened in the flesh. Uh, an order was placed. No, no hashtag fake news. That was authentic food being ordered. But so, so, and, yeah, and we are at a bar. It's called a ticket. It's called Ticket Sports. I think it's called Ticket. But I gotta get the full name right. Um, uh, right here in downtown San Antonio, and we actually have a few uh, uh, peckerheads sitting around us right now. Come say hello real quick, by the way. What's what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Adam Guerrero. Would you consider yourself a peckerhead uh, of the highest order? <laughs> really? What, what's your favorite moment in, in cheap eat history? Do you have one? Ooh, favorite moment in cheap eat history? Oh, I believe it's when uh, the man, the maker of shoes, discussed the perils of uh, some of the. Animals that used to accompany the wrestlers like Jake the Snake's Roberts, and uh, of course, let's not forget Coco Beware's. Uh, oh, no, no, don't bring that up. That's my favorite. Okay, okay all right. Uh, what, what's your name, man? What's up? I didn't hit a question. What, what's your name? Uh, Josh. Josh, would you consider yourself a peckerhead of the highest order as well? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, by far. We've been listening to it uh, since, you know, it was, uh, you know, since y'all guys were under a, uh, you know, another person that worked for the company. Jace here. Oh, uh, your shoemaker, Jace. Now, real quick, uh, what what are your thoughts on the really big feud currently between SGG and the Brian Campbell over Bret Hart's ranking in history? Well, you know, I think they both have their uh, extremes. Uh, I think, uh, I think, uh, Brian, the Brian Campbell, I'm thank you, uh, the Brian Brian Campbell, I I think you're a little harsh on uh, the hitman. Uh, I do agree that uh, Brett has very little charisma. Uh, he's he's very Tim Duncan-ish in uh, his way. Where wow, strong in San Antonio of all places to say it. I love it. Look, I'm not gonna say like Duncan's the greatest player of all time, but look, they're great, probably top ten. But yeah, man, it goes down with no charisma. I mean, Sean Sean was charismatic. He Sean had it all instead of Brett. I'm just saying. I, I will tell you, we're not gonna do this again. But I will tell you, and I love Sean, I think the depth of how good his character was is a little overstated. Char- charismatic, yes, but repetitive and slightly repug. I also think, also, let's not get down a, go down that rabbit hole. What are your thoughts on the gentleman to our far right in the corner wearing the Golden Truth t-shirt, repug or not? Uh, I think that is repug of the highest order. So, uh, but, I mean, there's, there's not the worst. I, I saw a guy wearing a Psycho Sid shirt earlier. I have a Psycho Sid shirt. It's my short. What, what about, hold on, what about the Brian Campbell's Nia Jack shirt? That, that, is, that is mage as all, dude. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh. My, my girlfriend actually had noticed that, and I was just like, oh, no, that's like the most made shirt that I've that you ever seen. Yeah, Guys, thank you, thank you for coming out for our little repug, cheap eat and greet. Absolutely. Y'all guys take care. Stay mage. Our age. pleasure. Um, a lot of, lot of love here for your Nia Jack shirt. Oh, come on. Uh, you know, she's not like most girls. I'm not like most podcast hosts. It just makes sense for me to wear this. All right. So, so getting, so getting back to tonight, you know, I do, I do understand the feelings people had. I really don't understand. Like for me, why? I, I don't know why they underestimate the the pop that you get. I, I want to see Jake the Snake so bad. Like, just why not? Why not just give me an old repug pop? Why not give me a Carlito? Give me a Shelton Benjamin if he's healthy. Give me, give me, give me Jake the Snake. I want to bring him over and ask the random fan here. We got, we got two, we got. Two Two marks right here. All right? No, 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 no. That's not the word. These are these are pecker heads, I believe. Are you, you this is a strong, strong, strong. And, and, and you can honestly refer to us as that just because we take a trip, spend our own cash, right. fly from our own city. Which is what city? What city do you come from? <laughs> we came from Indianapolis. All right, there you go. So what was the question with that? What's the question. You know, average strong fans who love our podcast, when Oregon wins the Rumble this year, is it a negative to you? And if so, why? I, I, I popped. And you know why I popped? I popped because I'm a lifelong Orton fan. I'm an apologist, legacy, the whole deal. Yes. And, 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 and people say, oh, you like Randy? And I say, yeah. And I, my wife, she says, I, I say, hey, do you think Randy's attractive? And she says, oh, he, he looks nice. So it gives me a pass to go to the Rumble because you got guys like Randy Orton. And then he's got the RKO, the whole shebang. Come on. I, I, I feel you. I feel you. And what about you? Your, your Honestly, thoughts? I, I thought Bray was going to win the whole thing. And to see Randy kind of stand there at the end, I I was a little, uh, what's the word? Uh, McClemmed. Yeah. 
and it was awesome. I, I, I loved it. All right, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, by the way, one, one of the gentlemen is wearing an AJ Styles shirt. The other, a, uh, a Ted DiBiase Million Dollar Man shirt. Uh, I want to finish out by saying this. Uh, the AJ Styles John Cena match was one of my favorite things I've ever seen live. I, I, I see a lot of matches. I go to them because I'm a nerd. But that AJ Styles John Cena match was something for the ages. Thank you for putting it on. God bless Cheap Heat in this podcast because it's something that gets me look forward to every day. It's awesome stuff. I don't know if you can hear that, listeners. This man just felt something right in the field spot. You are a hundred percent. You could not be. You could not be right. Thank you guys so much. Mage, 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 mage. Uh, thank you, boys. I appreciate it. Ooh, ESPN running some some highlights of John Cena versus AJ Styles on the TV. Will, will they use a quote from? Uh, there's Butchergrass. Why not? Why not? I don't want I don't want Bucciagross right now. I want some big B Brian Campbell on there. Yeah, we absolutely do. But Peter, I, the biggest question fans are going to have coming off of this, and we kind of tease. I, take your time. I got to eat a wing. Yeah, delicious wings have just hit our table. Is we spent a lot of time booking the damn territory, and yes, everyone out there, I did call Seth Rollins coming back to NXT, and that's a moment where inside that arena, Freeman calls him. We popped for it. It was a big moment. But no follow-up to that on Sunday. And I think, again, that's where a lot of people will have an issue. You know, you tease Seth, he doesn't come out. Samoa Joe, not in NXT on Saturday night, doesn't appear on Sunday. Same with Shinsuke. So we got what we got, which is a Randy win. So if we spend a lot of time booking the territory here, Peter, what do you do with this? There is a pay-per-view in between before Mania. So what do you do with this Randy Orton victory, knowing that Cena is the belt holder on SmackDown Live? I believe what we will see is Cena, some, you know, I want to say that John Cena will somehow lose the title to Bray Wyatt at the Elimination Chamber, and then we will see the Wyatts break up at Mania. However, there's part of me, I can't say whether it's in the field spot or not, that says they decide to, and I know a lot of people are going to groan when I say this, they're just going to go, you know what, for the last time, it's been an epic run, once and for all, Cena Orton. And I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, we've seen that before. One question on that. Do you need, now Cena tied Ric Flair, 16 World Championships tonight in WWE. Do you need Cena to lose the belt in the in-between pay-per-view at Elimination Chamber in the Chamber of Elimination match to make it more meaningful at Mania that Cena would be trying for 17? Well, I mean, do you mean that Cena gives it to Orton? Because otherwise that means if Cena loses the title... That means Cena wouldn't be able to even necessarily go for the title because Randy Orton can choose to then go for the title. So, and again, this is what my up, the upside is to the Rumble for me tonight. We do not know where it's going to go. And a lot of people, I understand their disappointment in not seeing some of the pops they wanted to get. But I, I don't like the idea of being altogether disappointed. And by the way, I just want to say that in addition to the Golden Truth shirt and your Nia Jack shirt, I just noticed directly next to us the Santino Morello shirt. So I just want to... I didn't even see that. I'm popping for the for the guy in the corner with the ten right now with the Ty Dillinger. Oh, the Ty, the very timely Ty Dillinger. Excuse me, right here, the Santino Morello, right next to us. Right. Now. Wow. Should we get his attention or no? <laughs> no, I don't think you can. I, don't, I think you may not be aware of the of the of the mageness going on. Yeah, he may not speak English either. I'm not really sure about that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, but he says, so I, I I understand the people's disappointment. I just see a lot of upside to not being sure of what's going to happen. <laughs> The Braun James and the Cavaliers once again have the best record in the Eastern Conference and are storming toward the one seed. Do they have what it takes to repeat as champions? Oh, 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 this Saturday night, they head to the Garden to face the Knicks. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern on ABC and on ESPN Radio. Presented by GNC. I'll tell you this. Let, let's talk about what we do know based on the Rumble. What we do know, tell me if, if we know this. I believe we know this. Do we now know that we're getting Roman Reigns and The Undertaker at WrestleMania? I don't know if we know this, but when they stare down, it meant something. Because seriously, look, why would you do Roman Reigns Undertaker? You would do it because it's the ultimate rub. It's the ultimate rub that, hey, Roman Reigns, you're the next Cena. You're the, you're the, the, 
You're the guy in the will who's going to, you know, receive his just due. You're the heir to the throne. You got to go through Taker to get there. You got to get the ultimate put over. It makes sense booking wise. I caught feels from watching that. But the reason why I say I don't know because Taker had a, had just as big a part in the Lesnar Goldberg situation, which I that's why I think maybe this Rumble won't get credit for how well it was booked on the stretch. All right. You had Brock coming in, cleaning house, F5-ing everyone, you know, just destroying people. Then you have Goldberg coming in, quick standoff, Goldberg quick elimination. Because of that quick elimination, I don't necessarily know that they had to go back to the well for a third meeting, right? I almost felt like the quick elimination of Goldberg on Lesnar and the instant run back of Taker and Goldberg staring each other down... Did that open door for business there? There's a lot. I don't know. I assume the Rock is part of the WWE's near future, right? We all agree. Three to five years, whatever, you know, he's going to be involved. Especially now that his UFC career is in serious peril. Um, so the only way you can have Rock, this guy who is so important, much more important than Goldberg, be destroyed twice in a row by Goldberg as if there's comeuppance. There has to be. There's got to be comeuppance. Great, great point. Great point. So if we lock them up together, if we lock Reigns and Taker, I'm not going to hate that, even though i got to be really honest about something. You know, we caught some jokes about saying how Taker of late has looked like Patrick Ewing in a Supersonics jersey, but Taker tonight, he looked like Patrick Ewing in an Orlando Magic jersey, all right? That's what I'm going to say on that. I'm just going to say... Just by looks. Performance, he performed. I'm just going by looks, okay? I think I only remember uh, Patrick Ewing being a bench coach for the Orlando Magic. I don't even know if I remember him playing there. He played there. He did play there for one year. Uh, it was Tree Rollins S on the stretch. But uh, but I will say, oh, no, Tree Rollins and Jays? Uh, Tree Rollins and Jays. But, but the thing is, though, Taker did perform well in this, all right? Brief spot in there. Had some moments. You love the, you love the, the stuff he did with Reigns. I just think it comes down to this. You want to leave the Rumble as a fan with the, with, with the future mapped out. You know, if you enter the Rumble with five options of how it can go, that, that, would, that would make you feel good. You want one of those five to be taken off the board. I just don't think they did that this time. I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it. I thought top to bottom, the card was, it was, you know, was really exciting. I spent half the night in the Dome. I spent another half in my backstage working on some recaps, you know, interviewing some people. I felt the card was strong. But I got to ask you, sometimes you have to question why you don't get that on Sunday night. You get it on Monday night, and I fully expect the Raw tomorrow night to be hot, the SmackDown on Tuesday night to be hot. Sometimes I got to question, why are we not leaving Sunday as happy as we could be? Why do we wait till Monday to get that to get that feel back, right? That, I find it odd, too, because like you, you think you want to reward your loyal viewers for getting the pay-per-view. So it is surprising to me that they end up then giving it away on Monday so big and not giving us that on Sunday. Um, in, a, in a certain sense, I get it. Everyone waiting tonight for Samoa Joe. And, you know, I saw Samoa Joe in street clothes five minutes before the Rumble, and I'm like, oh, man, I guess this guy really isn't going to be there. Um, you know, you, 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 you see last night, Shinsuke Nakamura lose the title to Bobby Roode, which also you think opens the door. Maybe we'll get, I mean, it'll be quick, but maybe we'll get Nakamura the next night. No Nakamura. No Samoa Joe. Um, no Kurt Angle. Um, you, you, it, the list goes on of people that you thought. No Finn Balor. I mean, that was what people... Now, listen, I think probably a lot of us got ahead of ourselves and ahead of, more importantly, ahead of him, schedule-wise, of where he is. But so many people were picking Finn Balor to win this thing outright, and you don't get him either. Those are four guys who are, like, in, on some level logical to get. You did not get any of them. And so I do understand why people are frustrated, uh, but at the same time, I got to tell you, between the fact that the Dome looked and sounded and felt amazing... And thank you very much. We just deli just uh, got our delicious pepperoni pizza here. Um, between the overall feel of the show, I still think overall I rated a, a good pay per view. And I think that the, the match itself did have you need a, a good Royal Rumble match has to have those under moments, those 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 fun kid moments, those fun spot moments that that look back and are memorable. Maybe this one didn't have giant ones, but I thought consistently 
the Eldor spot was a surprise entry, made sense, was fun and games, went to the Strowman elimination. Strowman eliminating seven guys got put over strong. Corbin, a guy who I predicted would win the Rumble, coming in looking very strong, really got a good push. Those moments were good. Even Jack Gallagher, a guy I don't really pop for myself, I thought his performance in there was a was a fun spot. The umbrella pop between Jericho's legs. My kids, when we rewatch re that tomorrow, they're going to pop huge for that. Believe me on that. You had enough of those. I just think it hit a dead spot late in that 15 to 20 area on the Rumble when you started to do the math in your head and realize those surprise moments may not be coming. I mean, like you, when Nakamura sold that knee injury Saturday night above and beyond, when Tenzai, our guy Matt Bloom, is coming out to carry him out, but there's no stretch or there's no gurney, there's no real protection of that left knee. I'm like, he's coming out Sunday night, and he's winning it. Because when I find out that it's AJ, Nak AJ Nakamura at Mania, trying to do their own Kenny Omega Okada part two, you know what I'm talking about? Did you start to think that for a minute? Hot shots in the field spot, bro. I mean, you know, we wonder why Christmas missed us growing up, right? We, we, we talk about birthdays, but worst it. we could have been drinking champagne, right, with an AJ knock. And I don't know where we're going now in Mania. There's still so many pieces on the board where they're going to make, again, I've talked about it, Get, heading into this Mania, there's an embarrassment of riches of what they can do. There's a lot of chess pieces on the board. You're going to make a fine-looking puzzle, and we're all going to be there in Orlando taking part. I just don't know what that looks like right now, and maybe that's a good thing, right? Maybe maybe some of these people on Twitter are complaining for no reason, but they can still use that to their advantage, the fact that between now and Fastlane, Mid Elimination Chamber, we don't know what's going to happen. All right, let's go over what we do know. I mean, so when I say no, I mean, of course we don't know, but I mean what we can project. And I think that is uh, Seth Rollins' Triple H. We can start to project that pretty clearly. That one's pretty much clear as day at this point, right? Um, we know Randy Orton will be in a match against someone. Um, that much is confirmed. I believe you could basically book Undertaker and Roman Reigns. And, and to your point on Goldberg and Lesnar, you, you pretty much booked that for the third because you're right. You hammer home that a guy like Lesnar who doesn't take L's, he may, he may take L's against USADA, he don't take L's too often in a ring or a cage, right? So he's, he, he's now double booking those L's. you got to come back from that. So so book that match. That's probably going to happen. You talked me into it, all right? So now we're already at three and a half matches that we know, and all of a sudden this card is taking shape a little bit more than we thought. Those are marquee matches, right? So that that's good stuff right there. You still don't know what's going to happen, though, with that Raw title, right? Is Owens going to drop it and then face Jericho like we all think he will and break up that friendship? From there, it gets a little sketchy, right? Like, you may see a Big Show Shack. That can open a card if you want to. You may see a triple threat of some kind on the Raw women's side. You may see Finn Balor come back at the time between now and WrestleMania and him get involved in the title picture. Exactly, because Roman Balor, that sells. That, that moves product, all right? That moves product in my heart. That moves product uh, 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 on, the, uh, on the financial scale. I think you can make that happen, but I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Finn Owens is pretty good, too, by the way. That is, and if you think about it, that was probably right where they were going after SummerSlam, right? That's where they thought they were going. So if you pick up where you left off, you probably, you probably, I mean, those two in the ring would be gold. That'd be gold. Well, I'm mid piece of pizza right now. And solid gold, not Ange Gold, solid gold, all right? Shout out to at Ange Gold, who's in Hawaii right now, watching on tape delay, though. He said he would be watching tonight. Um, I'll give you a couple of winners from tonight, excuse me. And that was B. D. Brian Campbell, just shoves a delicious slice. I gotta tell you, this pizza... It gives you the, it's hitting you right in the field spot. It's giving you that old Chuck E. Cheese, Shakey's Pizza, like just, it's, it's simple, it's basic, it's delightful. It could be Mama Celeste, but it's just, it's delightful. I call it some fourth grade roller magic feel, feels right there, you know what I mean? It's, it really, it's true. Pizza, roller skates, first time we smoked a cigarette in the bathroom, a lot of those feels coming out. Huh? <laughs> okay, God. Um, so detailed, that's what makes you a true artist. Um, talk about some winners uh, throughout the night. I'll, I'll, I'll throw one at you right now. You want to know, want to know a big winner tonight? Uh, even though it comes from the kickoff show? Naomi. Naomi got the best, most love she's ever gotten. Naomi gets scores a pin in that six-woman tag. Has her music playing at the end of a match in which she's like, the, arguably the least uh, on the roster, the lowest person on the roster. Yes and no. That was also the empty arena match. That You know what I mean? I, I thought they got a lot done in a short time in that match, but not a lot of pop, not a lot of, not a lot of fanfare. I thought Natty and Nikki had some good moments in there, but 
Did they do enough to push forward Natty and Nikki? Do they have like enough? No, this was just an excuse to get as much females on the card as they could in meaningful situations because it was like two major Raw matches. Hey, SmackDown, we're just going to throw you in a six-man tag that means nothing. Well, does it, does it bother you that there were, of, of the three of the three matches on the kickoff show, we saw like, let's see, Nikki Bella, Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Nia Jax, and Sasha Banks Five major players in the women division that were all sort of tossed into the kickoff show. Is that a problem? Uh, it speaks to the depth of the roster that that's the only way they're going to get on the card. I mean, it speaks to the depth of the roster that the Raw Tag Team Championship match was on the pre-show, right? But it also speaks to my heart that the Good Brothers, you know who I'm talking about, Anderson Gallows, finally, bro, finally got the push they deserved, all right? You tease the Dusty finish with, with, with transitional champions Cesaro and Sheamus, and then they finally, Al Gallows and Anderson go over. I didn't like it had to happen on the pre-show, but I'm glad it happened. Now, where do you think that we go with the New Day? Where does the New Day end up between now? Enzo and Cass and the New Day are two really over tag teams that I have no idea at this point, and we're talking about the night of the Royal Rumble, Getting into the, the Monday after, where they where they stand. You're gonna have a problem at WrestleMania, and it's what I call that embarrassment of riches. The same problem you had with this card, because the brand split has worked so well. It's not gonna be like last WrestleMania, where injuries forced. Hey, we gotta go to the bullpen. We gotta bring in the righty. We gotta bring in Shane O'Mac, right? We gotta do anything to bring eyes and and downloads and pay per view buys and all that. It's gonna be a problem to get as many people on the card and not go. Hey. We would have to take this jobber battle royal. I'm sorry, you know, R.I.P. Andre, I love you, but that sometimes is a jobber battle royal where we just fit all our mid-card guys in. There's going to be some high rent mid-card guys in that this year because it's going to be hard to get on that card. So on the Raw Tag Team side, to your point, you probably want to do a group match. If Gallows and Anderson still have the belt, Enzo and Cash, who have been doing not much in the tag team way of things, they've been embroiled in different singles things with Rusev, a lot of stay busy, keep busy, let's use their humor things. You may want to go triple threat tag team. Gallows and Anderson, The New Day, and and Enzo and Cass. And these, these, these good brothers on the side popped over here, right? Well, I, th I think, I mean, it's not my favorite way to use those guys, but at least you use them. I mean, I'll tell you what's clear. What's clear is Enzo and Cass aren't breaking up between now and WrestleMania or any time soon that we can tell. And I'll tell you what, it's also clear that those guys are still over, like gangbusters. Both of them. And the New Day is still very over. And let's talk about the spot where Kofi Kingston takes the bump off the top turnbuckle, stomach first, onto the ring post. That was the Kofi spot we got this year. You're waiting for that Kofi spot. This one was interesting. He looked like he... But Jay hurt himself. It looked like he barely hung on to the back of the back of the goalposts there. I'm gonna let you finish your slice of pizza. What I did, it was it was it was repugnant that I did that to you. And you literally had pizza just halfway shoved down your gullet. And we're trying to make a real a cogent point about Kofi Kingston. What are people chanting for here? I see yes. I see some tens. Ty Dillinger. I see a guy in an RKO shirt doing the Randy Orton pose. I see a lot of different things that are. That are both awesome and we're pug. There's a guy with a New Day shirt. Is this a wrestling shirt? What are you wearing right here? Oh, oh Finn Balor. A Finn shirt, yeah. This guy with a sweet, with a sweet AJ shirt right there, right? I, that, I don't think that shirt's authentic. I believe that's a bootleg. He may have bought that on the, on the New York City. He may have bought that in a barber shop out of a gym bag that was filled with VHS tapes, all right? You know, that's not official merch, is it? Rob Schamberger. Oh, that's the Rob Schamberger? Oh, I'm a big fan of the Rob Schamberger work. I'm a big fan. Rob Schamberger right there. What did you say? He's got the Bobby Roode Schamberger. Oh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Schamberger shirts. i got to be honest. I have the Sasha Banks and the Nakamura. I'm a fan of both. Uh, were you worried, a uh, separate topic, were you worried for Enzo's health when he took a clothesline from hell from Brock Lesnar? No, I could tell. I, it was it, the way he, the, he tried to hit him inside out, and he ended up kind of landing on the, like, his shoulders, neck area, but I could tell it was good. You had to think that not only JBL popped from that, but the Blue Meanie may have popped from that too. All right, shout out to Blue Meanie. That was a that I enjoyed that whole spot from Enzo, though. I, I really did, and he just posted on his Instagram after. Uh, uh, posted a picture of him entering the Rumble and wrote, I was 99% sure I was going to win. <laughs> you know, we're talking about other winners from this from this pay-per-view. Here's a win. Totally, by the way, totally buried my name in the Hilmi theory. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a winner that we don't talk about enough because his match tonight took a while to get going. It was a quiet dome. But you know who was a big winner tonight, bro? My man, Neville. All right? All right, Neville. He's been saying that he's been the king of the cruiserweight division for a long time. Tonight, tonight, the bro jump put the crown on. You know what I'm talking about? 
Absolutely. I, I, I successfully predicted that in the uh, kickoff show, which I expect you to watch when you get home tomorrow night. Um, let's get into that. All right, let's not bury any more of the leads. I mean, Peter Rosenberg is here on the WWE Dime. He's in San Antonio, right? That's right. I mean, there was some free show going on. I wasn't watching. I was in the dome. I was experiencing experiences. Tell me about your experience. I did three hit. I did three hits before I was on the desk. Two hour kickoff show today. Hour one, my first hit was outside the stadium with the crowd behind me. Todd Patton, Gilla Jace, if you will. Thank you very much. Yes, I got a couple of tweets about that. Uh, num- hit number two. The real nerve wracker was the walking down the ramp. Being, uh, they gave me the walk down the ramp. Explain the rules of the Royal Rumble hit. <laughs> like Andre in WrestleMania three, which is why they invented that motorized car. Did you blow up at any point during that? No, I did not run. All I had to tell you that was a really long. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys a little something right now. I'm gonna reveal something that I think it's okay to reveal because I'm sure it's all over Instagram, but they didn't show it on television. That ramp walk was so long that to expedite it for the big guys, all of the big guys, Mark Henry, Big Show, Rusev, they all went to the ring on a motorized cart, which was hilarious. And B. Campbell looks very confused because they didn't show it at all. But yes, they all floated down to the ring on a motorized cart. At that point, I was backstage watching on a monitor. You're telling me that that they played the music. But they did not show the actual end. So when I heard, showed them appear on the ramp, they showed them on the stage, and then they cut back to the ring, they'd say go, and they'd fly down in a, in, in a motorized car, a la a high-speed WrestleMania 3 and 4 uh, a mini ring. That's the most repug moment in Mark Henry's career since he was in the 96 Foot Locker Slam Fest and didn't actually record a slam dunk, all right? I've seen it on YouTube. You can catch it there. i got to tell you one thing that wasn't repug about Mark Henry, though. His pop on arrival tonight. I, I was, that was great to hear. I heard his music very early in the day in that in that do not report section of the day that that did that if you see something don't say something portion of the day but on the inside I was popping oh, me too I, I heard the exact same thing I got very very excited hey listen guys what we gave you right here was just a bonus 30 minutes I don't know we give you we're not gonna give you more than that we gotta hang out with the Packerheads we gotta down these wings maybe drink an adult beverage you probably have like six stories to write between now and tomorrow morning is that correct absolutely I also uh, want to just per- say one more time and lament the one thing the one pop I didn't get tonight that I wanted more than anything was this pop Ah! Ah! I know, I know. Well, it did happen. It just happened on the kickoff show. Yeah, I just wanted to make that super creepy noise on the air. You know that. Yeah, of course you did. And I want to say one last thing about Shawn Michaels while we say it. If you have ever thought about, as we all have, Shawn returning, watch his energy during his promo tonight, and you can tell... He, it's uh, he's, he's 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 not he looks great, but like when he handed the mic back. So in my opinion, and I this is based on nothing but what my visual tells me, it's a guy who no longer gets high off of performing in the ring. I just don't think it's there for him anymore. Two things to say about it. One, and the good brothers around us had said it. I saw him backstage and I see the first thing I said was. Those arms, though, right? That looks like I'm about to come back to the Rumble type arms, not I'm about to make a Christian music movie under WWE Studios. You know, that's that's not those kind of arms. This is the this is the I'm ready for action. But yet, I gotta give him credit. I talked to him. I interviewed him last week. You probably read that story on ESPN.com. There's nobody that is just what you said. Not interested in getting that high anymore. He's pretty much high on life. He's just not interested in coming back. I, I really believe that in my heart. A lot of guys struggle with, with that, letting go of it. He's not one of them. I also want to say. Uh, Mickey James looks physically great in person, right? I probably I probably have to limit my speech of what I'm allowed to say as a grown man here, but she looks very good. Yes, she is really, really looking fantastic. Um, anyways, I think overall, an entertaining Royal Rumble, some great things, some things to complain about, which is actually all we ever asked for in a WWE pay-per-view. We will be back somehow later in the week. i got to go to Houston on Tuesday. You'll be in Connecticut. I'm going to the Super Bowl. Um, so probably, realistically, if I'm, if I'm keeping it real with you, if I'm keeping it a buck, I would say maybe Wednesday morning you and I will have to jump on the old uh, Comrex and make this thing happen to get back together later in the week. But we wanted to give you a little bit of something. Because we want to hear Stack Guy Greg have to defend his L from last week, right? Well, the L and the, uh, well, a lot of people. I, I ran into someone yesterday, huge Stack Guy fan, said I love Stack Guy Greg. He said, I will never forgive him for the Harley race in his top ten. He <laughs> said he can't forgive him. It was it was like the, the, the smarkiest thing that's ever been said in anyone's top ten ever is throwing an Harley race. But shout out to Sack Guy Greg. Wish, wish he was here. And shout out to the guy on Twitter 
who not only took your and I mage backstage picture with the four horsemen hands and put a long, like, nine-foot subway grinder in our hands, but then superimposed Stack Guy on the left and the maker of fine leather footwear on the right. I have not seen that yet. And I and I retweeted it and wrote, then, now, and forever, hashtag GP. Mage. Stay mage, guys. We'll see you soon. Go! Everybody, get up! Everybody, get up! Everybody needs to understand that I'm more than simply a hype man for this rap group. Just like Geico is more than just a company that can save you money. Geico also has fast and friendly claim service, so they can help you when you need it most. And while I do love being a hype man, I also love reading for children's audio books. Like Little Bo B. She lost a sheep, and she don't know where to find them. Yo! Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Sunday, DeAndre Jordan and the Clippers head to Boston. To face Isaiah Thomas and the Celtics. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern on EEC and on ESPN Radio. Presented by GNC.